Okay, so here's objective two on our exponential functions lesson. And so we're going to be able to model some real life exponential situations. And uh, one of them's right here in this Foxtrot cartoon. So I'm not going to, you know, read the whole thing. I'd, I'd really like to have time to act the thing out. Maybe meet a partner, something like that. Uh, but, you know, this thing's already so long as it is. Anyway, so here's the gist of it. So this math teacher, math teacher decides, okay, so the, f the first week of school I'm going to assign one second of homework. On the second week I'm going to double that, make that two seconds of homework. And then uh, the third week I'm going to double that again. Now you have four seconds of, of homework and you keep doubling it until the end of the school year. And the school year lasts for 36 weeks. Is that something that you would agree to? And of course, you're going, of one second of homework? Yeah, sign me up. All right, so uh, you do the math and you see if that thing, uh, that would pay off for you. Okay, so uh, for that kind of situation in that Foxtrot cartoon, plus, you know, um, a lot of times in, whenever I'm computing some tax, I'm taking a number and I'm taking, um, maybe I'm doubling it, I'm multiplying it by some quantity, for tips, I usually maybe tip 10%, and then I have to add that back in. If it's tax, maybe it's 8%, and then you have to add that back in. So take a look right there. Um, if I'm going to calculate some tax on this, assuming it's 8%, I take the price of whatever it was, the initial amount, and then I take 8% of that price and add it back to that. All right, so let's not work that out. Let's just do some like algebra on that and simplify it because, well, there's a goal in mind. You'll see it. Okay, so obviously I had to take the decimal, uh, the percent and write it as a decimal. Just move the decimal place over two places, right? And notice that they both have a factor of 5.50. And you wouldn't ordinarily do it. You just type it in the calculator, right? But this is going to be useful. I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. So when I factor it out, I'm left with in the parentheses 1 plus 0 0.08. And then, of course, you would add those things up. So you have 5.50, which is what you, the original price, and then in parentheses, uh, multiplying times 1.08. Basically, it's 108% of your, your price. Okay. So what that does is that it, it takes a price, calculates a tip, and adds it back in all at the same time. So let's look at this in general then. So if you have an initial amount of A, and you're multiplying it times some percent, and then you add it back in, well, they have a common factor of A, and then you factor that out, and you have 1 plus R in the parentheses. So A is the original amount in both of these cases, so 550 over here and A in general over here, and then what's left behind is 1 plus the rate, okay? So in purple, over there on the left-hand side, 1 plus the rate is 1.08, and then in uh, general, 1 plus R. I promise I'm going simpler with this, okay. So. Uh, Sometimes, in certain situations, like um, you wouldn't just compute it once. Like, imagine a situation where uh, you take 8% of something, and then you need to take 8% of your answer, like this, and then you need to take 8% of that answer, and then you need to take 8% of that, and add it back in, and you keep on doing that over and over again until you get real tired. So here, I've just turned this into an exponential equation, because I'm doing it over and over and over again, uh, a total of t times, t factors of that. So I still have the original amount on the outside, and on the inside I have 1 plus the rate, and it's raised to the t power. So this is like your base. The thing that's in the purple is like your b value for your function. And notice that it is bigger than 1. Since it's bigger than 1, this must be a growth function. It's exponential growth. So let's look at the, uh, the opposite side of that. Like a discount. I go to the store, something's on sale. It's 10% off. Okay. So uh, I start off at 550, and I'm going to take 10% off of that. I'm going to subtract that off of the original price. So again, take the, the percent, write it as a decimal. They both have a factor of 550 there, so I'd factor it out. And then in parentheses, I'm left with 1 minus the rate. So uh, subtract that, I get 0.9. So does this make sense? Like if it's 10% off, then what I have to pay is 90% of the price, right? That should make sense. Okay, so here it is in general. So just like before, I'm starting off with the original amount, and then I'm subtracting off the percentage times the original amount. And you can factor out the A, and you're left with 1 minus R in the parentheses. So still, uh, A is our original amount, and the 1 minus R, this time it's 1 minus the rate. 
Okay, so think of something that's getting smaller here. So, for example, maybe I'm taking 10% away. I just keep taking 10% away. Just keep taking 10% away. So I'd have that times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. I just keep taking away 10% every single time until I run out of room on my slide. And uh, now you can see that this is also an exponential equation, depending on how many times you do it with a raise of that t power. Original amount still right out here out front, $5.80. Now this time with this exponential equation, the b value, the thing that's in green is 0.9, which is smaller than 1. So this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and this is an example of exponential decay. All right, so let's put both of these things together, and you have an exponential growth model or a decay model. So this is a real-life situation where you're modeling something that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, like it doubles or it triples, or maybe it's just growing by 5% every single year, something like that. Um, so that's the one that's in purple there. What's in parentheses 1 plus r is your growth rate. It's like the base of your exponential. Whatever that number is, that number is always going to be bigger than 1. Okay. r, it's a percent. It's given to you as a percent, but of course you write it as a decimal. And then over here on the green side, if it's a decay function, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That thing that's in parentheses, 1 minus r, that's your decay factor. That number is always going to be between 0 and 1. And so it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller.